All right, so I've got my fiddle here and I'm just gonna start at the top. If you know what these little parts are called, can sometimes make learning the instrument a lot easier. So when that name is called out, you're not going, wait, what is that? So start right at the top here. This is the scroll, aptly named, looks like a scroll. Purely decorative, really, I think. You know, there's maybe mysteries as to whether or not how you build this has to, something to do with the sound, and I'm sure different makers would have different opinions on that, but mostly it's, it's a decorative piece. And sometimes these are like made of heads and things like that instead, like the front of a ship. Then we're gonna move down to the pegs here. The pegs are what hold the strings in, and these are very old fashioned. So guitars and newer instruments have um, more of a gear, so it's more of an advanced tool. This is actually just pure pressure. You're just pushing that peg in until it sticks, and that's what holds the string in. So it's kind of, it's very old technology here. And you can see um, our strings are E, A, D, and G. And the way these attach to the pegs are E, A, D, G. So they go around rotationally, okay? So as we move horizontally across here, we're going around the top of the fiddle. Um, this is the peg box. Then we've got the nut. So you can see right at the top of this black part, which is the fingerboard. So this is where your finger should touch the instrument. You want to avoid touching where the bow goes. Um, but right at the top here, you've got the nut and you can see that creates a little space right there to get the light in between. That's what's holding the strings up just enough so that you can press down, but not so much that it's hard to press them down. So the height of this nut is actually important. And if you find that your instrument is really hard to play, you might go to a luthier and they might be able to just shave that down a little bit. That is an issue that has popped up, especially on cheaper fiddles. Um, so here's the fingerboard. This is the neck. I'm gonna hold on to that neck there. And then we get down to the shoulders. So it's nice, we're kind of going with, with ourselves, neck and shoulders. We're built a little bit the same. Um, we've got our strings. Down here we've got F holes. This is where the sound comes out of the instrument. Um, just part of the marvelous, ingenious bit of physics that the fiddle, the violin is. It's, it's such an amazing thing. Um, and then we come to the bridge. So the bridge is quite important here. It's important to know that there is some skill in putting that bridge on there. You can't just take it out of a package and put it right on the instrument. It's got to be carved to the body. So unless you have woodworking skills and tools and really feel like you could get this just right on the curves of this individual fiddle, um, you might want to take it to a luthier. If you find yourself in a situation of a fiddle with no bridge on it anyway, a luthier might need to set up inside. There's something called a sound post, which is connecting the top and bottom of the instrument. And um, the position and placing of that is also tricky and important. So um, that's our bridge. It's more going into that than we think. It's also holding it a tremendous amount of pressure. Uh, again, when you think about the amazing piece of equipment, just by sitting here, this is doing amazing work, just holding those strings, which are with the tension is exerting a tremendous amount of force on the body of the instrument. So it's pretty cool. You can nerd out on that. So here's the tail piece. These are fine tuners. A lot of fiddlers will have all four. Um, I bought this new instrument and it came with one and I've kind of enjoyed just keeping it like that. Um, well, it's an old, new to me, but it's uh, it's, uh, it's an older instrument. Um, this is a chin rest, which I'll just say really should be called the jaw rest, but it is called the chin rest. I'll go in detail on that on the video of how to hold your instrument. So the chin rest, the tail piece, the fine tuners, then we're down here with the the nut, uh, the button, end button. And this is uh, where the chin rest is held on. Um, if you want to try a new chin rest or just try changing the placement of this, some of them, like this one obviously goes here. There's not really anywhere else you could put it, but some you might be able to, if it attaches more over here, you could adjust the placement and you would just use, there's a special tool that goes in here, but I often just use a metal paper clip and you just, 
unwind it, stick it in there, and it's like a little crowbar. You just unscrew it. These are just screws that tighten and loosen to get this on here. So you just don't want to, you want to be careful when you tighten it. Make sure it's tight enough to hold the chin rest on, and that's good. Um, the bottom, we've got the shoulder rest, not part of the instrument. Obviously, it's removable, but I recommend using them. Um, it can be a bit tricky to find the position that works best for you and this shoulder rest that you like the best. But I think they are good in this computer day and age to give yourself that space if you choose to play with your violin under your chin. And the bow. So we're going to start at the top, aptly named the tip of the bow. Tip top. Okay, so we're going down here. This is the stick, and that is how you should hold the bow at all times. So you should never use the bow hair or hold it in a way that touches the bow hair. You want to avoid touching the hair because your oil on your fingers will get on there and make it sticky. Um, eventually, often, this part will get dirty and grimy because the thumb does actually touch the hair with the way you hold the bow which is another video, um, but you wouldn't want that to happen to the whole thing. I'm gonna keep it clean. So we've got the tip, we're going down the stick, and then we've got the grip, the screw. You're gonna unscrew that when you are done practicing and loosen the hair. You're gonna tighten it when you go to play. Very important to do that because as humidity and temperature changes a little bit in your house, that you do want to try to store that violin in a place where it's not changing too much if you can. Um, but regardless, you want to just give this a break and let the wood relax when you're not playing it and then tighten it back up again when you're playing it. This is the grip and this is the frog. And um, I've got this here. I actually forget what this is called, but anyway. Um, and the screw. I think that's it. So, that's your instrument. Get to know it. You might want to watch the video again just to, to review it one more time. I've also got a diagram in my book. Um, and I did discover, I think it was whoever did the book, um, just today when I wanted to do this video, there's a little line pointing to this, calling that the pig nut. I must have thought I made a mistake. This is the pig nut right here that thing at the top of the instrument. Um, so I just want to make that connection live and on the air. Everything else in the diagram is correct, thankfully. Uh, but that's the diagram in the book, Complete Idiot's Guide to Playing the Fiddle. It's been around a few years now, but I like to think it's still relevant. So um, I hope this was helpful and I've got more videos and you can always hit subscribe on the bottom if you want more fiddle info coming your way.